Welcome, Matthew Harding. You're a professor of economics and statistics at the University of California, Irvine. And today is a very important day for us at the university because yesterday the Senate has just approved our new study program, Management Economics and Data Science. You're also a data scientist. What's data science and why do we need it? Uh, thanks, thanks so much for having me here. Um, data science is a new area that combines more traditional statistical and economic techniques with each other. And it's something that allows us to really take advantage of the enormous potential that big data has today. And it gives us the ability to, to work with big data and analyze big data and turn it into meaningful decisions um, that ultimately decision makers have to take. And uh, how did you end up there? And how did your education uh, lead you to this type of uh, things that you are doing now? So what, what did you learn to make you so successful nowadays? Um, so I started my career as, a, as an econometrician, and over time I uh, branched out into things that were more at the intersection of um, e economics and econometrics and computer science. And uh, this has given me the ability to interact with many companies and work on some very unique data sets um, that the private sector has. And it really helped me develop my skills in terms of um, being able to analyze this, uh, the data that we have nowadays. Uh, you told me earlier that uh, business analytics and data science master's programs are among the most successful programs in the United States now. Uh, can you give us some sort of an idea how successful programs look like? What's the defining characteristics? I think that's right. I think um, especially master's programs in business analytics are incredibly successful in the US. Um, there is a lot of demand for students that acquire these kinds of skills. Um, and it's really important, I think, in these programs to combine um, knowledge of um, computer science and algorithms um, with an understanding of statistics and also with a lot of domain knowledge as far as um, the kind of issues and concerns that businesses have. And so being able to kind of work at the intersection of different areas, I think, is really key for um, the success of one of the students who actually studies in these programs. Uh, which areas would you predict uh, will have the biggest uh, demand for graduates of these types of programs? Is it across all businesses, all sectors, or other specific focal areas? I think right now we're still seeing a lot of students going primarily into the tech sector. Um, a lot of um, students are kind of aiming for the kinds of uh, very appealing jobs that, um, that are offered by social media companies um, and other sort of internet-based companies. But at the same time, we're kind of in a phase where these techniques are becoming more broadly applicable to many other industries. And also many industries have access to large amounts of data that previously they didn't have access to. So um, I think while many students um, are aiming for soft tech companies, they also find that there are, there are tech groups within uh, more uh, standard businesses that maybe up to now you wouldn't have classified them as, as tech businesses. And um, people can find very interesting and fulfilling careers in, in across different kinds of industries, whether, whether it's like finance or retail or banking or other industries. Do you have any advice for our potential students and graduates? What should they focus on? How should they approach these studies? Um, I think, I think the stu for the students, it's still really important to, to master a number of different skills as they go through, through these programs. Um, it's, quite, um, it's quite important for them to be able to, um, to understand how data works and be a being able to, um, uh, to handle large data sets. So acquiring knowledge about um, um, the, the various forms of data and the various databases in which data, data is being stored is, is important. Being able to turn data that is potentially very, very messy into data that is uh, interpretable and they can actually use. And then the sort of the second part of the, the job of being, being a data scientist, which is uh, developing the analytic models and the statistical models that, rec that you uh, then apply to the data in order to uh, be able to understand and analyze it. So I think there, um, there are a number of different elements, I think, that make a, a successful data scientist here. And students really have to kind of engage with these, these different components in order for it to, um, to work out. A lot of the industry sector, uh, a lot of the business sector in Austria and neighboring regions is relatively uh, 
strongly composed of small companies. But nevertheless, I predict that also for smaller companies in a few years, there will be increased demand of people that have data uh, business analytics skills. Would you share this assessment? Yeah, I think we're going to see um, increased demand for business analytics um, from all kinds of companies. And uh, with the increased digitization of the economy, um, the, the big data is not restricted only to big companies and small companies can, can actually have a lot of data as well that they're going to need to, to use in order to optimize the business processes. Um, and one of the factors I think is, is driving this is that we're, we're seeing a transition away from uh, data being generated through things like social media to data being generated uh, through the Internet of Things and the increased penetration of sensors. And I think many businesses, even small businesses, already have sensors in place that may record various aspects of, of the business in, in, in a lot of detail. And this can be as small as, as, as a farm um, uh, that already probably has a lot of sensors recording production and uh, equipment and so on. Thank you very much, Professor Harding.